All right, today we have a 1988 Chevy Beretta, and this is the three-speed trans uh, 125C or 125 lockup. And the problem with this is when this got hot, it made a one-two shift only. Uh, had no third and had no lockup. So I'm not really sure uh, what we're gonna find but we're going to open this up, we're going to tear it down, and uh, see if we see anything. Uh, there's really not much on the uh, outside here. This is your uh, governor um, and slash speed sensor. Your uh, hookup for the wires, you know, for lockup. I'll show you the lockup switch when we get the pan off. And you would pretty much just have uh, uh, your neutral switch or your MLP switch, which is this here. I had taken this off already. And that's really about it for the outside. Uh, so let me get a little closer and we'll start tearing this down. We'll take the uh, cover off first, which is going to house the valve body. And we'll uh, continue from there. All right, so let me. Uh, just zoom in a little, get a little closer, and we'll start tearing this down. All right, so we'll start. Again, taking this back cover off. These 125s had a had a problem of the uh, lockup switch, I guess mechanically clogging, and these things would stall a lot. You know, you put this, you put it in drive, the engine would shut right down, or you come to a stop, and the engine would chug it and shut right down. All right, here is the side cover. All right, here is your valve body. This uh, section is the valve body. This section is kind of like the auxiliary valve body. And uh, we're going to be changing the gasket on this cover. And in the kit, it comes like with four different ones. And I believe there's paperwork to help identify uh, which is the right one. Because uh, I guess it's easily uh, mistaken or maybe they're very close um, in how they look. You know, I just got to get my scribe out of my toolbox. Okay, so we're going to disconnect these wires here. We'll be placing that switch too. Alright, All right, so now we'll start. Uh, I'm going to take the, uh, the piece off, the uh, linkage off for the cable here because it's blocking the uh, harness. All right, there's that piece. All right, so the next thing we're going to do now it looks like somebody actually had put a switch in this already. It has the quick connects on it. Uh, we're going to take the um, we're going to take the uh, the auxiliary. Actually, maybe you know what we'll do. We'll just see if we can take this whole thing off as one. This is going to be a long bolt here, and just got to remember which ones come come out. There's 
sleeve. There it is. There's another long one here. Okay. And then I believe we get this one. Okay. Another long one. I think that's gonna probably okay, so that'll get that loose. Now we'll take the rest of the bolts out on the outside. It's been a while since I did one of these. should come out. All right, I'm going to have to break that one loose. I missed the bolt somewhere. Alright, another one hiding under there. check balls and it looks like one two three possibly five again it's been a while so I do apologize for that but well I we don't get many of these and since I did since we did get an okay to do this one I wanted to make it a point to film it because I don't know when I'm gonna get another one Okay, so next thing we get to take off is the channel plate. Actually, you know what, before we do that, let's get this governor out and knock this axle seal out. Speed handle. Sometimes these things break, and this one's probably going to break. Now let's see if we can loosen this thing up a little bit. It was pretty tight. Again, these governors, sometimes these bolts come off a little tight as that one did. I remember that because a couple of them did break on me. Okay. Here is your governor cover and your 
There is your governor. And your exciter ring for the vehicle speed sensor. And there's also a bearing in here. And you have an O ring. We'll look at that governor uh, after the unit's all torn down. Anyway, so I'm just going to knock the seal out. There's also a screen all the way at the bottom, and that looks fairly clean. We get the seal puller. All right, there is your axle seal. Easier to get off now while the case is uh, loaded up. Okay, so we're going to continue. you. So what we need to do is we need to move this linkage. Okay, so now we have this, let me just turn my lights back on, it's getting kind of dark in here. Okay, so this linkage is hooked up, and in order to get the channel plate off, of course, we're going to take the bolts out, and we're going to push this linkage out, and we can't forget to hook it up again when it goes back together. So we'll push that out, and the manual valve is free here. Okay, so now we can take the bolts out. Different size bolts, pretty much small, medium, and large, and a couple of T40s too. And we've got two 13s here, we've got a T40 here, and we've got a T40 here. Uh, we've got two of these for the center support. Okay, we'll get these out. Alright, 
So there was a T40 up here in the corner. And there's another one in here. Okay. I think that is it for the bolts. This cover should come off. Let's try it. here and you just want to check that to make sure the pin is not loose this pin seems a little loose in here so the inside of this uh, accumulated piston is probably worn out so we're going to get another one of those So this uh, we'll put aside for now. I've got to scrape this gasket off, but what I'll do is I'll run this through the tank. Gasket off. Okay, so here is a bearing that was here. You got a three-tab washer. All right, now we got to get the O-ring off the shaft, which I forgot to do for the lockup. Here is your O-ring. All right, now this should chain should come out. This chain feels okay, it's not too much slack in it. washer that actually is cracked and that goes on there and then we have another four tab washer for the other side all right so we'll take these off all right now we're gonna have to drop the pan because we got to pull the linkage out in order to get the rest of this unit apart so let's, uh, first thing we're going to do is let's pull this nail out. That's going to have to come out. Okay, there's that. It goes right in there for the linkage. And then we're going to have a pin appear to knock out, but let's see if we can probably do that now. All right, you know what? Let me just find. Let me just find the right size to knock that pin out. And I'll be back in one second. All right, so we'll knock this pin out for the linkage here. All right, here is the roll pin. So what we've got to do now is we're going to uh, turn this up, take the pan down.
pans. They probably serviced this transmission because it was very clean. The oil was very clean. But there's the pan. There's really nothing on it. Like I said, I'm not really sure what I'm going to find here. Okay. Here's your filter. Probably new as well. Alright, so... Uh, we'll take the servo out. This is for the band, for second gear. Uh, and we're going to take... Yeah, let's do this. Let's take this hold down bracket for the pipe. That's for reverse. And we'll take this pieces of linkage out here. So we can... So we can pull the rest of the linkage out. This linkage is going to go like this. So this is kind of how this this goes when it's inside the unit. So I'll just put this aside. Now, right now we need the ten. We're going to take these. Where is my ten? Here it is. Okay, now, let me just show you this one thing here. You see this? How this is moving? All right, that shouldn't do that. There was a spring inside here, and the spring is broken. And when that spring is broken, it gives you a hard shift into second. Uh, and when it's coming down, I think it'll, it'll downshift harsh as well. This, I believe, is for third gear, uh, but this was not stuck. Everything was good there. Usually when that's stuck, that'll, that'll keep it from getting third, but... Okay, here is the pipe for reverse, and you have a little washer that goes on the end, and... Let's see if I can get it out. There's going to be a small O-ring. And this is what this setup looks like with this pipe. Little O-ring and a washer. And then there's a uh, another seal that's in the case. Um, similar to like a 200 or 204R. Uh, seals up against the center support. three rings, you got a washer, okay here is a I guess a piece that just keeps the band in plastic piece, it's held in by the support and a pipe goes over, the reverse pipe goes over that. So this we should be able to pull right out. Okay band's a little burnt, that of course is going to be changed. Slide these drums out. Now here is third, and this is first gear here. So I'll just finish tearing this down and uh, open this thing up. Like I said, not really sure what I'm going to find with this. And I'll throw it when it when it gets hot, unless there's something with the. Uh, 
possibly the lip seals or something in the in the drum. All right, here's the spacer. That goes like that. Okay, front planet. You got a ring gear bushing here that I like to change all the time. And you have two four tab washers on the front planet, one on each side. All right, of course you want to check these gears for rocking motions. Make sure this is smooth here with the bushing lines. All right, the sun gear. You kind of got a, a, a shiny part and a part that has a um, like a ring cut in it. Uh, the shiny part is going to face in here and right against the washer. That actually will go like that. Here is the sun gear and shell. Comes apart. Okay, so now we're up to the center support, and we've got to take a snap ring out there and have to use a special tool to get the support out, and hopefully it'll come right out. Won't give me too much of a problem. Sometimes they can be a problem, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so let's get this ring out. This is just looks like the same on both sides. Sometimes these things are beveled. I do not believe this one is. Okay, so this is the tool that we're going to use to get the center support out. We're going to, um, has a couple O-rings here, but we're going to uh, shove this in. I'm going to bring it down to the edge here. I might have to actually take this off. Let's see if I can get this in. Yeah, no, I can't even get it in. All right, so very carefully, because this falls apart very easily on me. Okay, so we got it in place, and then we're going to turn, uh, put this in and lock it. came out, it, it shouldn't really work like this. This should kind of, let me just show you how it's supposed to work. It came out and that's half the battle. This actually is supposed to go all the way in and then you turn this to lock it so it can't come back out. And then you pull the center support out. But this thing's been giving me some problems, but it worked. Uh, I had a, actually, this thing fell apart on me and I had to find these O-rings to put it back together. But here is your um, center support, houses the low reverse piston. And then we're going to have a very thin snap ring. Alright, very thin snap ring uh, that goes over the uh, low reverse clutches. Plan it out. Okay, this has a washer. This has a sprig, one way clutch. See, it turns one way, locks the other. That's going to be changed because those pretty much have a high uh, failure rate. Let me just put my lights back on. All worn out. This clutch actually is all is worn down. All right, so these are going to be changed, and then they think the, the, and there is a spacer which goes on the bottom. Okay, here is a spacer that goes on the bottom. So it's going to go like that. And when it's back in the trans, it looks like that. Here is the spacer. And this is going to go 
on the opposite side of where the center support goes. So again, it'll look like this when it's back in the car. All right, so we're gonna get the ring gear. And here we have a four tab washer that goes on the rear planet, like that. And here's a washer that goes on the back here. And they're actually, I'll take this apart later, but there's, a, I think, another washer on the bottom. And you got a bearing here uh, for the uh, rear ring gear, and this is park right here. Alright, so now we're going to have another snap ring, and that final drive will come out. Let me just get rid of some of this oil here. Here is the snap ring, uh, kind of holds the final drive in. I'm going to see if this whole thing will come out, there will be a spacer, and then the final drive setup. It looks like that spacer might be holding it in, so let's try to get that out. Alright, so what we're going to get... Longer screwdrivers here. See if we can get the spacer out. Okay. All right here is the spacer. Now this should come right out. Okay. here as well, which there is. Okay, that's for your final drive. All right, here's the final drive right here. And you have another bearing. There we go. And this is going to go like that. Okay, there's also a bushing here. Uh, you want to look at that, make sure that's good. If it's worn, you want to change that. Usually they good. And this uh, pretty much won't come apart this way. You'd have to take this thing, uh, have to take this apart, but it'll probably be okay the way it is. Back in the day, uh, where these final drive gears, these spider gears used to ride, they used to wear into this um, housing, and we would actually, as a common thing, I mean, this is probably in the 80s, have these sleeves so we can use these over again. There was a company in Connecticut that used to do it. We used to get like five at a time because uh, we, you know, did so many of these things. All right, so let me just get uh, straightened up here. Uh, I want to get, the case is empty now. <clears throat> I want to get rid of this case. Um, I want to get rid of some of this oil. And we'll start opening up the drums, uh, look at the valve body and center support and see what else we got. So I will be back shortly. All right, so I guess we'll start opening up these drums here. Uh, we'll get the uh, forward. still see the writing on these but I'm going to put a banner kit in this 
All right, these are the forwards. This has like an extra steel on top for a spacer. That's how it came through. So that's how it will go back together. And you got a couple of sealing rings, a couple of sealing rings right here. All right, so let's look at this director on here. Now, I don't know if there's an issue with the piston. Um, the direct drum seals on these rings. Uh, when it got hot, if there was an issue with these rings. I'm not really sure, but you know, maybe we'll take this apart. Uh, these frictions, I mean, it's, you know, they're, they're okay. All right, so this is easy enough to come apart because it's a big snap ring. So we can just get it like this. So let's see if we can see anything. All right, here's the return springs. This thing came out fairly simple. I mean, fairly easy. It doesn't make, maybe it doesn't like how there's no drag on this thing. I can spin this. I mean, there's rubber O-rings in here. So chances are that could possibly be another reason. Totally losing pressure when it gets hot, but it really shouldn't do that this easy and come out this easy. So we have an O-ring in here. It should be much harder than that. So, all I can kind of say is hope we got a, a problem with the lip seals here. Maybe they shrank, uh, shrunk down. And even without that, see this piston has turned very easy. It really shouldn't do that. or something like that. That could probably be our problem. <clears throat> and these, these go in facing up. This is the back side. There's nothing here. So they go in facing up like this on a, like a 440 or a 4T65. If you put this set of, has this set of springs for second gear. And uh, if you put them in uh, upside down, the car will not shift out first. Okay, so let's look at our sprig. It's going to be changed because these things do fail. Uh, and when the spray goes bad, the car will not move and drive cold, but it will move hot. And another classic sign how to tell if your low sprig is no good is you pull it down uh, doesn't move and drive, you pull it down into manual one and it pulls and the car goes. That's a classic sign that the spray is no good. So that's going to be changed as part of the overhaul. And here is another washer that I wanted to show you. That goes in, that goes in here. Alright, so this spray is going to be changed. Alright, here is the center support. You got three rings. And another washer here. All right, these three rings will just come right off. Pretty simple. All right, I do want to show you this here. What I want to do is take this clip out and show you the broken spring. Let's get that clip out without losing it. All right, that clip came right out. Here is your broken spring. So anytime you have you have an issue where this, you know, it's not tight up against the clip here and it's moving, then the spring is broken. So here you go. There is the broken spring. So that's also uh, pretty common. And then you have your two uh, lip seals on your piston and you have a gasket as well. 
All right, and real quick, the center support, I'll show you the return spring on that. Let's see if I can get this thing out. You gotta push down on it. snap ring. Here's the retaining plate and you have a, a spring, return spring like this. Wavy, very wavy. And then of course your piston. here if you wanted to take this out if it'll even come out no actually this one I guess it won't come out okay so this will stay right in or you can take this piece out right here and take that out and take the you know you take the piece out and pull this little flat piece out here all right the manual valve here you don't want to forget to hook that up when you're going back together with this. And let's take a look at this valve body. All right, here is the pump shaft. All right, this thing actually came apart on me, so let me just... All right, so we're gonna pull this out. This is gonna house your, your pump area. Okay, so you want to definitely look at this to make sure this is all nice and smooth, which it is, it looks good. All right, here's your lockup switch, which this was changed, but again, part of the overhaul, switch is not expensive. We're gonna change it anyway. And I'm gonna be taking these uh, bolts out, uh, putting a new gasket on. You know, I think something happens I can't remember what happens if you use the wrong gaskets. Like I said in the beginning, four gaskets come in the kit. And I think it comes with a piece of paper to identify it, but I, I'm sorry, I just can't remember what happens um, if the wrong one gets used. Possibly no throttle pressure. Okay, and also I wanted to show you you have a screen. You have a screen right here that goes in. All right, then you have your typical, you know, pump pump gear. Here's your centering ring and your pump things. I tell you, I can't remember when the last time I did one one of these. But this guy loves this car so much he wants to fix it. Uh, uh, the rotor and another of the central ring. Okay, now we'll flip this thing over. Take the separate plate off. I think there's going to be a check ball. One check ball, I think. It's much easier when it gets stuck on the plate than stuck on the valve body. Yeah, one check ball right here. And you can't really see it, but this is your throttle valve, you know, shifting wise. And you want to make sure that's free, which it certainly feels free. Right here's your governor slash speed sensor. And I don't know if you'll really be able to see this, but one thing you want to make sure. These weights work by centrifugal force here. They got springs on them. And inside, when you push down, there's uh, uh, check balls that come out. And you wanna just make sure you see those check balls. Another way to check 
Another way to check this governor is to blow through this side and you can see it's sealed. So this thing feels okay. And this also has a washer on it. This also has a washer which I is stuck in here now through through the oil, but it has a dark side and a lighter side, and I like to go by uh, looking at the governor, it goes a dark side up. That is the correct way the washer goes. And you have your ceiling ring here. Well, I think that's about it. I'll have this thing done before, you know, this video goes out, and I'll put uh, at the end um, if this actually was okay when it went back in, but I think what I'm going to be looking at here is a problem with these because this piston uh, shouldn't spin shouldn't spin like that. It should be a lot more drag on it, and that's really the only thing that I found. Either that, or we got a problem with these, you know, I said with these rings. But I'm leaning more towards what's going on inside this drum. Uh, when the oil's thicker, you'll have third, but as it thins out, it's probably bypassing right by these lip seals. Uh, that's what I actually think is going on. Um, all right, so I guess that's really about it for this uh, transmission. It's again out of a 1988 Beretta. It's a 125 lockup or 125C transmission. We're dealing with no third and no lockup when it gets hot. So we're going to start the uh, overhaul process. I'm going to start cleaning these parts up and doing the overhaul, get it back in the car. I'm also going to get a torque converter for it and hope for the best. So I thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, again, I do, uh, I do apologize to the sense that it's been many, many years since I've done one of these. But as you start doing it, it kind of starts coming back to me. Uh, but it certainly has been a while. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and have a great day.